I'm sure you've spent massive amounts of hours in this game already, but if you're one of the few people that haven't bought this game yet, you're definitely missing out. Let me explain. The Legend of Zelda, the most anticipated game of 2023, everyone's heard about it. Your mother, your cousin, even your dog. So if you've been living under a rock for the past month, let me tell you, you're not just missing out on a piece of history, but you're also missing out on a piece of art. The graphics, even though it runs on Nintendo Switch, which at this point is an outdated 6-year-old console, looks fantastic and even better than its prequel, Breath of the Wild. Now, Breath of the Wild is at a high stage standard for open world games, or any games for that matter. As we started to see this trend of video games companies releasing unfinished games as quickly as they could. Yes, I'm talking about Cyberpunk, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, Overwatch 1.5, and many more. Having just one good and polished game gave us gamers a sign of relief. Now what exactly does Tears of the Kingdom do that no other game is doing out there? From a massive 3 layer map, a better story than the first game, to destroying the Korok seeds that we so massively despised, and destroying every enemy with a Gundam, instead of being forced to go into support order on how to beat the game, not only does this game let you pick where you want to go, but also how you want to beat it. Playing the whole game with only a stick? Sure. You can beat it on an hour or less if you wanted to, with the growing speedrun community, endless glitches and high-tech mobility tactics, everything you've ever wanted in a single game is here. Well, you know, maybe not everything. <laughs> The exploration, while being one of the biggest parts of the game, never makes you feel bored. There's always something that captivates your eye, whether that being a better weapon, a tenacious fight, a small rock in the most misplaced location ever. I've played this game for over 70 hours, and while it took about 5 hours to leave the beginning area, I never once felt the need to rush through it because I just wanted to watch the scenery, discover old places from the first game, and see what changed. The combat, while diversely different from the first game with the all-new weapon fusion ability, makes battles feel more alive as you decide what to fuse your weapon with. Now, while they do break, it doesn't feel as bad as Breath of the Wild, seeing as you can just beat higher tier enemies, get their parts, and fuse them to your own weapons, to always having such a highly damaging weapon. Or before that, in earlier versions of the games, you can just infinitely duplicate the same part over and over again. Get infinite money, food, materials, swords, shields, and there's even a sword that's fixed at 30 damage, can never break, but you can also do a little bit of glitching, make it out two elements, multiplying the damage by 2000%, equipping gear to add an extra 500%, and then now, not only can you fuse items to your weapon, but you can also make it whatever you want with just the use of your hands. Let me know what you guys think of this game, it gets a 10 out of 10 from me.